everybody at AOE U. I'm so glad um, that you're maybe on Instagram and just happened to notice that we've gone live. I'm so um, excited to be here again. We uh, at AOE U know that it's been a long week for a lot of people and we thought, well, let's just throw up a live and um, talk about one of our favorite things, the magazine at AOE U. And I am um, going to be joining or joining me. I'm always joining her. Um, she actually knows a lot more about Instagram than I do. Is Abby Shukai. She is our, there she is. Yay. Um, welcome, Abby. I think if anyone follows us on Instagram, they're probably familiar with you or at least have connection with you because you know a lot more about <laughs> you and Instagram than I can ever claim. But um, I was just telling everyone that we're kind of throwing up an Instagram live kind of last minute a little bit. We know it's been a long week for everybody. And we thought we'd talk about one of our favorite things, the magazine at AOEU. Yes, and we got lots to chat about. We always have lots to chat about. I'm not worried at all about our conversation. But um, as people are joining, welcome. Um, my name is Megan Daner. I am the senior editor at AOEU Magazine, which means I get to work with awesome people like Abby to help get information about what it's like to be an art teacher and that crazy brain of ours um, out to all of you on our um, website and then also help on social media every once in a while with these kinds of things. And so um, I brought on Abby today to kind of talk about her experience with the magazine. She has a great tenure uh, writing and she has a lot of familiarity with many of not only articles, but you, the reader, because she's interacting with you guys all the time on Facebook and Instagram. And I thought, well, I'm curious what Abby's favorite articles are for right now. Like, where, where is she going for inspiration? So I know you don't need much of an introduction, Abby, but I'll let you introduce yourself. And then I have a couple questions for you about the magazine. Okay, perfect. Well, um, I am Abby Shukai. I am a middle school art teacher by day in um, <laughs> Omaha, Nebraska. And I have worked with the Art of Education University in a variety of roles uh, for the past five or six years. I don't even know. Um, but yeah, you probably have, I've written a lot of articles um, as a magazine writer. Um, I do teach some graduate classes as well. So maybe there's some of some awesome AO, AOU students here. And um, yes. <laughs> and then I also um, am kind of the face behind a lot of the social media you see on here on Instagram and on our Facebook pages and Twitter as well. So if you have a question and you send us a DM, it's 99% of the time it's me answering. Yeah. So <laughs> I try. So yeah, so I get a, a big feel for um, what our audience, what, what what's going on in the world of art teachers on a daily basis. And not only do you see what all of the readers are maybe thinking, but you are living it as well, being in the classroom. Yeah. So um, we know that the magazine gets like thousands of views every month, which is so wonderful because that means <clears throat> art teachers are seeking out um, relevant information and meet each other. Um, so why do you think the readers keep coming back? Well, I think the first thing, like you just said, is that it's relevant. So let's look at the writing team right now. Um, each one of us is, because, due to the pandemic, has an entirely different teaching scenario, um, which many of our readers do too, so they can come back and relate. So whether somebody's teaching in line or in person or on a card or in a hybrid setting, all of the writers on the team right now are experiencing those same things, and so they can add that perspective to it. And um, no matter what, we always have those different voices that are coming from whether it's elementary school or high school or the middle school setting, um, or even like the administration setting um, that we have a lot of different voices to kind of hit um, all of the different art teachers that there are because we <laughs> are not all the same and our situations are all different and will um, continue to be different. And I think another thing why people keep coming back is that we're, we're all art teachers. We understand the perspective of an art teacher. We're not, you know, 
we're just not a business person talking about what, you know, the theory of art, we're all in it. We're all, it's what we do every day. It's applicable to us. Um, you know, we're in the trenches with you. So, right. so we totally Boots get it. Yeah. So I think ground. that all just plays in with, um, the, uh, you know, the, our experiences are authentic and we're trying to share and, you know, give you that, give our readers the information that they might be looking for. Exactly. And I know that all of you with your boots on the ground and thinking about all of our readers and knowing that everyone's in a different situation, teaching environment, and also the layers of life. Um, if you had just one article, one article to share with everyone, or you wanted all of our readers to read right now, what would it be? Well, I'm actually going to choose one. I know that I just talked about, you know, the authentic voices and the teachers. I'm actually going to choose one that was recently written and it is not by an art educator. Right. But I think because it's not coming from an art educator in this in this circumstance, it makes total sense. Um, but recently, I think last week, there was an article that was published that is called why the future of art education is bright and advocacy is something that we art teachers will probably have to continue to do till the end of time um but you know to be honest if we're not going to do it who else is going to so we kind of need to do it um but it was actually written by our chief growth officer and he works a lot with school districts and teachers and educators themselves and so um it's, it's it's a great article to talk about. You know what? Art education is not going to go away. I know that this is a really uncertain time for a lot of educators thinking about, is my program going to get cut? Um, you know, what does next year look like? Am I going to be the first year to go? Um, there's a lot of great data and research, which if we're talking about advocacy, that's what our administrators, even though like, you know, our teachers don't always think data, like, okay, what are the numbers? Because it's so, sometimes it's difficult to get those concrete numbers. Well, this article has it for you. Right. So go, um, if you're feeling a little discouraged or not really knowing what your future or the future of art education might look like, um, it's, it's, it's a good one to give you some peace of mind, but not just like, Oh, like a little blanket piece of mind. There's some factual evidence and data in there to kind of, you know, um, get, take back to you or to whoever you need to advocate for or anything like that. So I would definitely um, recommend checking that one out. And after we have our chat, um, our chat will go on Instagram Live and we will have all the articles that we mentioned linked and also this conversation will live forever on youtube we will put it on aou's youtube channel and the articles will be linked there as well and a little bit more background on the article that abby's talking about um why the future of our education is bright is be is also i look at it as really empowering right it gives you the information that you need not only to maybe have a conversation with an administrator or even your own community and your own students. I know teachers are feeling a lot of heavy things. The weight of the world feels on their shoulders. What am I doing? How can I be making a difference when there's all sorts of things swirling around me for not only myself, but kids and students. And it's like, no, we have actually been preparing for this for a really long time. And so having that, and also an outsider perspective, EJ's looking in to our world and really admiring what we're doing as art teachers, um, knowing we sometimes don't get the credit we deserve, at least I'll, yes. say, that. I'll say that, you know. <laughs> um, and what, I know that topics are always relevant on social media and social media can be, a, it's different than a website where we put on content so the conversation kind of can develop. And how do the magazine's articles play into the conversations that are or aren't happening on social media? And where does the connection sometimes come or doesn't? Yeah, sure. Well, I think kind of like the where the where the common thread lies is that, you know, we think about social media as current. Um, what are, what's going on now? And um, when, how that translate over to the magazine and what, we, what we're writing is that 
we are expressing those current needs, not only from teachers, but most importantly for our students. And um, so constantly, you know, our teachers were always looking for ideas and we're always willing to share ideas. If there's one thing that this pandemic has taught us is that our teachers will give up anything and share anything for the good of the other, which, mm -hmm. um, which that's exactly what we need to do to support each other. And so, um, yeah, those current things where, um, you know, a teacher might say, you know, I'm struggling with student engagement in my classroom, what's working for you? And that's kind of where um, the magazine can swoop in and help you too, because we have resources for you and, um, you know, things that you can apply to your classroom right away. Um, so that whatever issue you're dealing with, you know, we, we we have an answer for you. But I think some of the things that people are always looking for um, are just new techniques, new methods, and going back to the needs of our students. I think one of the things you'll see a lot on the magazine right now is we're talking about social emotional learning a lot. And I know we talk about all of these. Um, I know Sarah's been on here a bunch talking about that. But um, I was just thinking about something the other day, just, you know, we have all these buzzwords of what's the, in education, what's the next thing. And, you know, SEL is being thrown a lot, thrown around a lot, you know, mm -hmm. probably a lot of you have been asked to implement some type of curriculum into your classrooms too. Um, but there's a reason for that. And it's so, <laughs> so important. And I don't know if um, I've been down a research hole of all of the, you know, the, our students are Gen Z students, and this is a population of students that we have never, they are affected by technology and so, social media in an entirely different way than any student body. And, um, you know, I know if you, if any of you are documentary watchers, there's been some pretty wild stuff about the impacts and, um the long-term effects of when I say long-term effects, what happens to a 13, 13 year old who has never not known life without a smartphone. Like those are challenges that we didn't learn in school. <laughs> and no. like, excuse me, like, is this a landline? I'm not sure, but <laughs> dial up. Um, yeah, that's okay. Side note, dial up. That is one of my favorite sounds to play for my students. Like I, like when I start talking about like the history of animation and stuff, we get on this big technology tangent. And so there's like a loop on YouTube of the dial up sound sure. and you play it and they're like, this is terrifying. I was like, yes. And do you want me to under like, do you understand how I'm going to explain to you how it works? And they're like, we don't get it, but it's still really fun. That's but awesome. it's, it's just so different. And, um, I, if anybody's watched The Social Dilemma on Netflix, like the statistics in there are very, very disheartening as far as um, we talk about things like self-harm and the suicide rate and things like that. And those are things that are affecting our students so much, which is why it's so important that we are meeting the emotional needs of our students in our classroom. And art is the perfect venue for that because they have an opportunity to, you know, speak their emotions and kind of just zone out and, you know, be a kid and they don't have to worry about what's on their phone and things like that. So we're dealing with all these different things that we haven't dealt with before. So social media becomes, and we're as adults here, we hope to use it as a, a way of professional development and growth. Um, and that's, that's where it comes in with our magazine as well, where we are trying to solve some of those problems that teachers are having a daily conversation about. So, yeah, that's kind of a long answer to <laughs> the relevant things we have. Well, and what I love is sometimes there's a question or something is posted on social media and then you are really good about responding with an article that maybe was written like even five, six years ago that still speaks to what's going on. And obviously in the length of time, five to six years isn't that long. But when we're thinking about what we're writing and it being relevant, not only now, but it's going to be relevant in 10 and 20 years, especially right. with these Gen Z students 
become people and adults. <laughs> so, ah, you know, so it's, um, we're thinking about that. We're not just writing things because we know that they're important now. It's because we really think that in years to come and the months to come that people will need the information because art isn't going anywhere based nope. on the art yes. that you love. So, um, you mentioned media questions and media based, medium based things always on social. So, and I know that you are, you love to experiment with all different kinds of mediums in your classroom and eat up all that stuff. So what are some of your favorite media based articles in the magazine that get you really excited or you've used? Sure. So I'm actually going to start just plugging myself here. There's one article that I, I think, you know, talk talking about, you know, I don't know, five years ago, I think it's like at least five years old. Um, but it is, I think it's called the best, best color mixing game for students to play yes. or something. But anyway, we invented this game in my classroom called color rush. And it's a color mixing game where it's a competition. And any, any time that I'm just like, I, I need these kids to do some color mixing. Like we can, you know, plenty of color theory, but like we need something fun. We need something engaging to do. That's the one I always go back to where it's like, sometimes even though I wrote it, sometimes I like forget about it. <laughs> I pull out my color cards that I made and how it works. It's like you give, you separate, you either can play as like an individual um, team or like a group of students and you right. give each, each table a card and then using their same paint palette colors they have to mix to match that color and they only have a certain amount of time to do it and then whoever is the closest at the end of the time gets the point and it's amazing how like the tally marks on the board you know even though there's never a real prize <laughs> it it's some motivation they were like can, can we play this every day so there's a really good resource in there and all the rules and stuff yeah, are explained okay. in it so i'll make sure um to link that here after. Um, but another one that is a recent article that um, Sarah Krajewski wrote, um, it, I think, it, what is it called? Um, How to follow your heart, heart when making when art. Making. Okay, so okay. that was all kind of about intuitive art making. And so if we go back to social, social emotional learning, yes. giving students a way to express their feelings, it's a really great way to um, tie in abstract expressionism, which we're kind of doing that with my students right now. If there's any, if there's any time right now is the perfect time <laughs> to have your students be doing some of that. Even today, like kids were, we've been talking a lot about how colors and moods make us feel and just all of, all of the, what Working abstract, the abstract expressionism is. Yes. And they were just absolutely silent as they were working today, but they were all working, but it's just like really cool to see that that's what they need right now. And I think if many of you kind of try just letting go a little bit and just, just giving them time to do, to just do them, um, I think you'll be surprised at what you might find there. Um, okay. And then one of my favorite articles that has stood the test of time, I think this one is maybe, I don't know, it could be six years old. I'm not sure. Five for sure. Five. Um, well, yeah, five. I think it's written in 2004. Four. Okay. So this one was written by a former, um, yeah, this is a, actually a two-part article, but it is written by Matt Christensen. Um, he was a former writer on the team. And it was an article that's called Using Color Theory to Deconstruct Race, Part 1 and Part 2. And this is an activity that will stand the, the, the test of time. And it's just always a great reminder for an activity for what teachers can be doing. So just a quick spark notes of the video or the video, the um, articles are. So it's an activity that is talking about race with our students. That is something that, you know, if there's one thing all of our students know, we're all human beings. And race is something that um, they all identify with. And so he uses the idea of color theory to deconstruct what we know about colors of skin. So um, saying that colors like we're 
not looking at colors as white, black, red, yellow. Instead, when we're talking about color theory and race, we are all hues of brown. And so the, there's a really cool um, mixing sheet in it too, like a download that you can there use and download. could, could um, you know, modify it to fit whatever needs you might need. But fundamentally, it comes down to using the primary colors, red, yellow, blue, and white. And, you know, these colors that aren't, we wouldn't necessarily looking at them, think of flush tones, sure. um, but then putting them all together and mixing them to find that, hey, you know, we as human beings, we are all made from the same three primary th colors. And, you know, that is, is a different concept from um, talking about color theory, but it's amazing how you can get all these different hues of, of browns to kind of deconstruct that thinking a little bit. And it's, it's a, always a powerful activity for students to do of any age level. And um, if, you know, you're looking for a new portrait les lesson or color mixing activity, um, I would definitely check that one out because it's, it's awesome. You know, you achieve another thing is you, rather than students being like, I can't make my skin color. And then they do that whining thing like no this is you actually have the power to make your own yeah you, you have, so, might have to work you might have to work a little hard but you're we're gonna get there but you know right. it's, a, it's a cool activity yes no I love that and as met, Abby mentioned and I have too all of these will be linked um on IGTV afterwards okay finally one last we need to bring levity to the conversation in the week there are some art teacher humor articles a good handful <laughs> not all of it's serious how to's everyone um there's some fun uh just kind of goofy articles so which one is your favorite or keeps you giggling um so i always like one that amanda hein wrote that's called 15 things art teachers really want <laughs> or what's on their holiday wish list or something yes. and it's you know we're getting into the holiday season and i think you know, this one's about two years old. There's a lot of things that would apply. Um, but I think with our current situation of online learning and things like that, there might be some, we might have to make some amendments <laughs> to it or come out with a new version. But some of the things on there are just so funny where it's like, you know, oh, I don't, I don't need a, another gift card or chocolate from my student. Instead, I would like to go to the bathroom whenever right. I want or right. I don't want to have to yeah. open. I don't want to have to um wash out the brush full of sinks like I don't I don't I don't want to do that so there's some really funny things in there or you know my holiday wish list I wish I had glue bottles that didn't clog right. so it's very relatable um to <laughs> to what we do or maybe for some of us online teachers right now I the zoom fatigue you probably don't want to hear the word zoom ever again so um yeah we like to keep it real so i think in the there's definitely some art teacher humor on there for you but that's always one that i like to go back to when i'm needing a good laugh right maybe the ability to, to draw on your students faces on zoom but they can't see you <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah that would, <laughs> that would be fun right <laughs> well <clears throat> um that was all the questions i had for abby i know that um if you had any more you can ask abby anytime on aoeu and you'll probably get an answer from her directly or um you can find her on instagram herself and um we will be back next week with a new guest her name is victoria fry she represents the visionary art collective which is art teachers and artists coming together i'm really excited to talk to her but in the meantime thank you abby so much for joining us on this week and bringing um kind of a quick chat to get us all excited about the magazine and all the things that it has to offer regardless of what kind of week we're having and um Everyone look for the this lovely chat on IGTV and YouTube after this. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thanks, Abby. Bye. Thank you.